One of the uh, striking characteristics of Canadian literature is that it hasn't produced many uh, very long novels about contemporary life. Uh, it has produced uh, some very long historical novels, uh, some genre work. It's produced some long novel series, uh, some of which are quite celebrated, such as The White Oaks of Jalna or Hugh Hood's uh, The New Age. Uh, but it hasn't uh, produced many long novels that can compete with, um, with the, the long novels of uh, American literature in particular. I'm thinking of the works of uh, Don DeLillo or uh, Jonathan Franzen or uh, David Foster Wallace. Uh, now, some might argue that Franzen hasn't really produced a long novel, but I, I would rank uh, the corrections in that category. Uh, defining what uh, a long novel is is probably the first uh, 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 question one should answer. I would argue that it's a work that's in the range of 200,000 words or more approximately. The Corrections is around 180,000 words, so it's not quite up at that, that mark, but uh, I think it's close enough. Generally speaking, in Canada, the, t the tendency has been to uh, publish novels that uh, cap off at around 150,000 words. And I'm speaking here again of uh, long social novels about contemporary life. We do have long historical novels such as Alias Grace and so forth. Uh, but in terms of uh, novels about the here and now that are also uh, quite lengthy, uh, it's uh, pretty slim pickings. And uh, in the uh, Anglo-Canadian canon, there are probably two titles that, that sort of stand out as exceptions to this rule. Uh, the first one is uh, by Mordecai Richler. It's called Solomon Gursky Was Here. And uh, it's approximately uh, 600 pages long. Uh, and uh, no, my Penguin edition has it at around uh, 540 pages long. But it's, it's, it's a fairly densely, uh, uh, the composition of the book is, is fairly uh, densely put together. There's a, there's a lot of uh, text on each page. They're not trying to sort of uh, pad it out. And it has the feel of a, a long uh, work. It's, it's a bit of a hybrid work. It's not really a, a long social novel. It's more of a hybrid between social novel, between a social novel and a, uh, and a historical multi-generational saga. It tells the story of the Gerskis, a family of impoverished Jewish immigrants who come to Canada with, with nothing and build up this, uh, this fabulous um, uh, family business built on uh, uh, distilling, and uh, they make their money uh, first during the, uh, during the uh, uh, Depression, during the years of uh, Prohibition in the United States, and uh, build up from there to uh, a huge multinational uh, empire built on whiskey. And uh, the uh, second novel is uh, uh, A Fine Balance by Rohinton Mystery, it uh, won uh, widespread international acclaim when it came out, and uh, it too is uh, considered part of the Canadian canon. Now, uh, the problem with both these novels in terms of their, their uh, categorization is the following. In the case of uh, Solomon Gursky, uh, it's, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a hybrid work, and it does have a quite lengthy historical uh, sequences in it. Therefore, if one takes, removes, as I think one should, if one is to consider it from point of view of a long his, uh, social novel about contemporary life, if one removes the historical sections of the work, it uh, becomes much shorter. Uh, the contemporary sections are actually quite good. The, the novel tends to uh, lose its, its, its thread near the end, but there's some parts in the middle which are uh, extremely well done. And uh, and in the case of uh, Mystery's work, uh, uh, Mystery is the kind of work, uh, rather the kind of writer who has uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, acclaim, but he's not the, the kind of writer who I've ever met a very passionate fan of. He's, he's a rather dry stylist, and uh, he does have some shortcomings as a... Uh, uh, as a fiction writer, he's, uh, his, his dialogue tends to be rather wooden, and uh, his uh, sense of description is, uh, is competent. 
Uh, however, it's, it's, it's a serious work, it's a moving work, and uh, it does have authentic power. The, the problem, again, with it is uh, one of categorization. It's a novel entirely about India. It has nothing at all to do with Canada. Mystery is, uh, he, uh, is a Canadian citizen, and he's lived in Canada for a long time. He is a Canadian writer, but this is not a Canadian novel in, uh, in the true sense of the word. It's, it's, uh, uh, or rather, it's, it's not, uh, let me rephrase that so I don't get in trouble with anybody. It's not a novel about Canada, clearly. Uh, it's a Canadian work. It's, a, it's produced by uh, a naturalized Canadian, but uh, it has nothing to say about Canada as, as, as a culture, as a society. Now, there are some other works as well, which I think are uh, quite interesting. Uh, one of them is, uh, I'm in the process of reading right now, it's by Anne Marie MacDonald, and I'm quite impressed by this. She wrote another book, uh, which is much more famous, called Fall on Your Knees, although it's a rather controversial work. Some people really hate that, that book. They, they think it's just uh, sort of uh, genre-y and, and loud and, and sort of exaggerated. But this is, is really quite a strong work, and I'm very impressed with it so far. It's, uh, it's set during the Cold War in the early 1960s, and uh, so, again, it's, it's more of a period piece than a work about contemporary Canada, uh, but it, is, it has uh, uh, something about it, something about its, 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 uh, its political themes uh, lends it a very contemporary feel. And another one is uh, this novel, which uh, came out a couple of years ago, uh, The Origin of Species by Nino Ricci. And uh, it's a long novel, too. It's, uh, it's, a little, it's approximately 450 pages. It doesn't fall into that mega novel range. It wouldn't qualify lengthwise with, uh, it wouldn't uh, compare lengthwise with the corrections. And it's also not a social novel. It's told from the point of view of a single protagonist. But uh, with its, its, its uh, setting, which is uh, during the uh, 1980s, the, the bad years of uh, the Reagan and Mulroney administrations, uh, when there was uh, a very, very vicious uh, hot war taking place in Latin America, which was, again, framed by uh, Cold War political considerations, it's, it's, uh, it's a serious work, and it's thematically major. And another... Uh, work of note is uh, this one by Stephen Hennigan called The Streets of Winter. It's a fairly short novel. I mean, it's, or rather, it's not a short novel, but it's an average length novel. It's, it's around uh, 300 pages long. But in an afterword to it, Hennigan remarks that an earlier draft of the same work uh, was around 600 pages. And it would be interesting to see how that draft holds up to the uh, final published product. Because in some ways, uh, this is one of those. It is a social novel, and it is one of those uh, uh, one of those works that might actually benefit from uh, uh, more detail, more more uh, uh, more uh, more scenes t taking place in the work, sort of describing the action between characters. At, at certain points, it feels as if uh, uh, Hennigan might have cut a bit too much. And uh, finally, here's uh, a work from uh, Quebec that I'm also in the process of reading. I bought this uh, during our last trip to, uh, to Canada. And it's by uh, Louis Amelin. It's called uh, La Constellation de Lynx. It was translated uh, into October 1970, uh, last year, by Anansi. And uh, it's, uh, again, it's a period piece. It's about the October crisis. So it goes back a few decades. Uh, it goes back uh, four decades. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's, its political themes lend it a very contemporary kind of feel. And it's, it's, it's a social work. It, uh, uh, it's told from uh, many points of view, the, the points of view of... Uh, those involved in the crisis directly uh, uh, and uh, those sort of around it. Uh, but as you can see, there isn't really anything that you can point to that uh, would uh, compete directly with uh, 
with uh, some of the major American works that have come out that are uh, about contemporary life and uh, have those high word counts of, say, 180,000 words, 200,000 words, or even more. I mean, there are massive, massive, massive American novels out there.